Continuous measurement is a type of data collection where every instance of the behavior is measured. Types of continuous measurement include frequency or rate, inner response time, duration, and latency. Frequency is simply counting how often a behavior occurs. You can do this by making tally marks or using a clicker like this one. Rate is similar to frequency in that you count each instance of the behavior. You then divide that amount by the total amount of time of the session. This allows you to accurately compare data across sessions of varying lengths. Although this type of data collection is often used to measure maladaptive behavior, it can also be used when teaching new skills. Watch the video and collect data on the identified behavior. Then check to see if your answer is correct. This is Sarah. She screams when she doesn't get her way. We can use frequency and rate data to measure her screams. Simply count the number of screams that occur. We will calculate rate from this data. Compare your data to the data at the end to see if you were right. Let's take a look at the data. In session one, there were seven screams. The session length was 50 seconds. So the rate of screams was 0.14 screams per second. In session two, there were only three screams, but the session length was 20 seconds. The rate of screams was 0.15 screams per second. This gives us an average of five per second and 35 seconds for a session length and 0.145 screams per session. You can see in this example how rate can help us make sure that we are viewing the data proportionately. If you simply look at the frequency count, it looks like session two was a far better session, but in looking at the rate, you can see that the rates are almost exactly the same. Inter-response time is used to measure the time between responses. It can be used to measure behaviors such as self-injury, bites of food, or even completion of homework problems. To measure inter-response time, begin a timer when a behavior stops, and then stop the timer when it starts again. Watch the video and measure the inter-response time between behaviors and see if you get the right answer. This little girl is blowing bubbles. We are going to record inner response time to measure the time between each response of blowing bubbles. To do this, count the number of seconds that occur between the end of one behavior and the start of another. Check at the end to see if your data was correct. Okay, now let's take a look at the data. 
In interval one, there were seven seconds between the first behavior and the second. In interval two, there were eight seconds. In interval three, 12 seconds. And in interval four, there were only four seconds. That means the total inner response time was 31 seconds. And you can calculate the average in a response time by taking the total and dividing by the number of intervals, which in this case is four. And that gives you an average inner response time of 7.75 seconds. Duration recording is used to collect data for a variety of different behaviors. It measures how long a behavior lasts from onset to offset. Often the definition will include information about when to begin and end recording the data. Duration is often used to record information about challenging behaviors that have no distinct beginning or end, such as crying, noncompliance, or tantrums. It is also used to measure skills taught, such as how long a child sits to listen to a story or how long he pedals a bike. This is Annika. She cries when she is asked to do something she doesn't want to do. Use a stopwatch or count the seconds to record how long the crying lasts. Then compare your data to the data at the end to see if it's the same. How did you do? Annika's crying lasted 22 seconds. Is that what you got? Latency measures the time between the instruction or discriminative stimulus and the response. This measurement system tells us how long it takes a child to respond once the instruction has been given. You might use latency to measure the time it takes a child to clap his hands once you say clap, or how long it takes her to raise her hand once you ask a question to a group. To measure latency, begin timing as soon as the SD is presented and stop timing once the child responds. Let's look at a few examples. Measure the latency between the SD and the onset of the behavior for each of the following examples. Kick the ball! Raise your hand if you know what 3 times 2 is. Now let's look at the data. The child kicked the ball six seconds after the coach said kick the ball. The girl raised her hand nine seconds after the teacher asked what three times two is. And finally, the children started running two seconds after they heard the starting pistol. Is this what your data looked like?